sewer and water credit for Homewood Suites for overpayment. <coughs> water is $298.04 and sewer is, it's actually $1,079.42. And then we also have uh, UMass Top of the Campus contingent one day liquor license for January 25th, 2020 from 12.30 to 2.30. Um, and that will be in the donor reception basketball champions center downstairs lobby area is where that will be. Uh, but that one is contingent on approval from the fire chief, police chief, and at least those two. They have a motion. Make a motion to uh, accept the consent agenda items that were not pulled off, um, and including the addition of the UMass request um, contingent upon favorable acceptance from the represent parties. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> okay. Um, why don't we do the full time or the uh, full time firefighters first? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, mm -hmm. Chief. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So, I uh, just wanted to introduce to you uh, our two newest members of the department. Uh, they're not completely new, but uh, we figured we'd get them introduced to the town. Uh, they're currently under their one-year probation, and they've both been doing excellent for the, the, few, the few months that they've been here. So, first off, I'd like to present Colin Bank. So, I'd like to stand up. So Colin started, uh, actually, I, I apologize. Colin's here with his parents, Ken and Rose, and his sister, Rachel, is behind. Um, so Colin started with us in September. Uh, he took the position of Courtney uh, Bordeaux, and he's from Granby. He graduated from Granby High School in 2016, where he was dual enrolled and received his associate's degree in criminal justice from HCC as well in 2016. So as you can tell, what I'm heading towards here is he's a He's a go-getter, and he's proven that multiple times already. Uh, he started with Granby Fire in 2016, uh, and also joined South Hadley Fire District Number 2 in 2017, and received his Firefighter 1 certification in 2016 while working with Granby Fire. Uh, he, was, he attended the Hampshire Basic 6, uh, his, uh, and received his EMT Basic certification in 2018. <coughs> he, curr uh, he currently works per diem for AMR and Bay State, Medical Center as an emergency assistant. an ED assistant, um, and he also helps out on South Hadley Fire District Number Two. Also works there as a call force firefighter. Uh, Colin has received his Pro Board certification through the uh, Call Volunteer Program. He was class at 079, along with that gentleman behind him, Liam Higgins from Hadley. Uh, he completed that program in October uh, and uh, did a great job through that whole thing. And Colin just completed his fire prevention officer level one uh, in November, and he's been working hard. Uh, Colin is assigned to Lieutenant Washkevitz, and Colin has been getting grilled, because uh, of course Brian used to be on the DPW and plowed every single road in Hadley. So he has been hammering him on driver training and learning the roads in town. And I'm sure if we gave him a test right now, he would probably shine. Um, <laughs> So he's been a great addition, and he always is keeping us smiling and keeping us busy, and he's also always busy. He's always getting something done and working hard. He's also taken over uh, the department Facebook page and has been working hard on getting up-to-date information out, of course. So I'd like to present uh, Colin with his probationary badge. I'm trying not to stab him. Actually, Dad, Mom, want to stand up and do it? For me? Oh, I will. <laughs> We have paramedics standing by. I want to get closer up here. Oh, pre-cut holes. Just pull the portion told you once. <laughs> wow, that's uh, they're not pre-cut. Oh, there they are. This meeting's going to last about two hours. Until I get this done. There we go. Uh, we'll see you next week. <laughs> yeah, I'll just leave it like that. Sure. Congratulations. <laughs> we have Daniel Mam, and Danny is here with his mom, Danny, and his father, Ning, and 
a whole bunch of his family and a lot of his girlfriend Sam in the back row. Uh, so Dan is our newest addition and started with Happy Fire as a call force firefighter actually in 2018. Uh, Dan lives in Northampton and he graduated from Northampton High School. And pr prior to coming to us, uh, Dan worked as a shift supervisor at CBS and is currently and was at the time enrolled in the fire science program at GCC and is looking to complete his associate's degree in fire science hopefully in this coming year. Uh, Dan completed the Hampshire Basic 6 program and was an active call force member with us. And he actually applied for Colin's job and actually really took it upon himself to do it just to get the experience, see what he was lacking in, and he really wowed the whole committee that actually did the review of it uh, to the point where we actually kept his, his, uh, his resume and his application um, at the top of the list. He's also just to let you know, he was working on his EMT program when he joined the call force, and unfortunately he didn't complete the final testing portion of it. Uh, he ran out of time to do it. Unbeknownst to me, uh, prior to his being hired, he took it upon himself to sign up for the program, pay for the program again, and just completed the, uh, the skills portion, is now working on completing the testing. So again, another person who's just taken the initiative to get things done, and he's passionate for this job, and we're really excited to have, have him. Um, let's see, what else I have? Uh, he is also working hard, uh, learning the streets of Hadley, and he is on Group A with Lieutenant McKenna. And again, I can't tell you how proud I am of both of them. Uh, they, they're a great addition, and they're a pleasure to work with every day. So, Daniel Mayo. project um, getting down to the end of it hopefully end of January beginning of February we're looking at opening so we'll go through all the permitting and process that goes with that um, but we wanted to get the application for the license so anything else any questions or any comments where, where is this uh, the 191 the old Sears building Oh, nice bit up front. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And you're planning, is it going to be a cafe or a production it's facility? Be, it's or? a new cafe, mm -hmm. cafe restaurant like we have in East Hampton and Northampton. Yeah. Um, and we're consolidating our baking in the back of the building. So we have a Amherst Bakery and an East Hampton Bagel Bakery that we're consolidating together. Okay. So nice. we'll a combined space in back and then a cafe in front. Mm -hmm. Great. So I look forward to uh, getting going. Somebody just brought 
well, they go frequently to the one in Northampton, but I work at Murray's Orthopedics. Mm -hmm. So they're always picking up bagels and things. But somebody brought in a big tray of banana bread. Yes, we make the bread. Oh my God, <laughs> Did I, better than mine, I have to say. <laughs> no problem. Yeah. <laughs> Delicious. So, anyways, yes, we look forward to opening. Welcome. Okay. And meeting the, the town and city and everybody. Yeah, well, thank you. Okay. Yeah. Um, I have a motion. I'm asking that you make this license contingent upon um, the final payment of fees. I believe you're still working with Stewart. Yeah, I left a message. Yep. Yeah. And also, uh, also uh, until he has his final, till the final inspection, yep. and occupancy until permit. the certificate of occupancy, mm -hmm. please. Okay. So moved. <coughs> okay. Second with the contingency is articulated. Any further discussion? Good. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Any idea when you will open? Just <coughs> thought about the sure. first week, first, second week of February. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. pretty soon. Great. Yeah, we'll do a, probably a soft opening and then a grand opening right after or something. Nice. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yeah. So we're looking forward to it. Yes. All right. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. you all. Yeah. Literally, every time they walk to town hall, he's like peppered from side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and then next, we can do the. Uh, Farm Winery, uh, Ragged Hill. Yes. yes Hi. Hi. I'm Ann Garwood. Um, this is my father, Steve. We are the co-owner partners of Ragged Hill Cider Company. Um, we're in West Brookfield, Massachusetts. We have our own orchard where we grow all the apples that we make natural farm cider, with, um, hard cider. Um, so we've been asked to be a part of the um, farmer's market in the Hampshire Mall. Um, and we've been a part of other farmers markets. Um, are currently we're doing um, one in Worcester, Canal District. Uh, we do Sturbridge um, during the summer and West Brookfield during the summer. Um, so it's something that we're familiar with. Um, we do small one ounce tastings um, and then s bottles for sale for take home. <coughs> Great. Yeah. yeah. Any questions or? Concerns or anything? This has been approved by police chief, fire chief, and building inspector. Okay. Um, so we're good to go. Okay. Great. A motion to approve. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very Congratulations. much. Congratulations. Thank yeah. you. Good one. This is a verification for the whole time that the farmer's market is running. Yes. And that one is just on Saturdays? Saturdays, mm -hmm. yeah. from 10 to 2. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it okay. has an end date on it, and the license has um, an end date. Yeah, March 21st mm -hmm. is going to be the last date. So it's really only okay. like eight or nine weeks at this point. So, yeah. Yeah. Great. Good, good luck. I hope it goes well. Thank you. Me too. Yeah. And we have everybody for you on Friday. Okay, great. And then we'll be able to participate in this on Saturday. Okay, great. Yeah. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you. Thanks Thank so much. Thank you. Thanks. Um, and we can, uh, did, did we get them all? Yes. Got them all. Just making sure. Uh, public comment? Anyone here for public comment tonight? No, but I just wanted to say that. Um, uh, the TV. Who? The TV. John. 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 Somehow people are complaining that the voice isn't what it should be at the homes. Oh. Um. Right now. No, not now. No, this has been in the past that they've had to put it up quite high. Yeah. I think the live, my understanding <coughs> is that the live taping, like right now, the sound quality isn't nearly as good as when you rerun re it. it on the weekends. I think you YouTube. <coughs> so the yeah. so TV broadcasts are talking exactly. about mostly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, just yeah, to, just to give you a heads up, break right, because people have to crank it all the way up to here. Okay. Okay. So, but I think the channel would like to Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, since uh, Ed is, is here tonight, we can do uh, next thing on the agenda, human resource, uh, present recommendations to the select board for cost of living increases for fiscal year 2021. And uh, yeah, a proposal here recommending a 2% increase. So Nick, go ahead. I don't want to steal your time. Sure. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's it's uh, fairly standard. There's a few different numbers out there between the Consumer price index, uh, the you know, federal government raises, state raises, and then kind of you know what's in the region. And the consensus right now is right around two percent. I think that's a pretty solid number. Um, so with your approval, we would like to put that in the budget. Is that all within the operating budget that we can handle that? Well, well right we don't I don't know. I wasn't prepared to answer that. Question. Oh. <laughs> um, <coughs> yeah, um, I, I don't have a problem with the cola. 
And that also means step increases? You didn't say that. Um, well, that would be across the board. So, you know, every, every step in grade. So, um, every step would be bumped up 2% or just the COLA across the board? Like across the board. And then, you know, of course, if someone's eligible for a step, they would move into that new step. And then the, just not to put you on the spot with this, no, you're but fine. the compensation and classification plan that we did. Yes. So you're probably in that. I am. Back and forth. Yeah. Um, I think I, moving forward, I think it is a good idea to implement because it has a very structured way of grading positions um, mm -hmm. in term, you know, whether that's, uh, you know, um, exempt, non-exempt, uh, you know, there's a solid objective point structure. Um, looking at the current positions that we have in terms of where they fall into the proposed classification plan, mm -hmm. most people are being paid appropriately to the benchmark. Mm -hmm. um, some might be a few points above or a few points below, but they're generally competitive. Mm -hmm. There are a few folks that kind of outlie um, from the benchmark that I think we should bring into the benchmark. Mm -hmm. um, naturally, that might upset a few folks and I go, oh, I'm not getting a raise, but that person is. But because of the survey, we discovered that, you know, maybe they need to be paid a little more equitably um, would be the justification. Mm -hmm. So um, I did have a few folks ask me, oh, am I getting a step increase this year? Um, I'm not exactly sure how the town decided previously whether someone gets a step or doesn't. Um, I've just asked those that feel they should be entitled to a step increase to email me, preferably with a justification, so I can back up that that <coughs> recommendation. And um, you know, as long as I will move forward with, with that. Plan. So, barring any questions. Any other questions? Or? Uh, motion to accept uh, as a recommendation. I know we never really discussed it, but those steps <coughs> at one point were in or out, or you know, in this restructuring thing, they were going to take it into consideration or something. Didn't we discuss this a few times? The step increases? Yeah. yeah. <coughs> and I think we were <coughs> waiting for it yeah, to dig new, into it. Uh, the, <coughs> the new information that's out now was probably you've been given <coughs> compared to the old way we did the steps. That's what you're saying? Yeah, I mean, currently it's a pay band. Yeah. Um, and, and ideally, you know, mo in the modern sense, most have a band, you know. Let's just say 25 to 35 an hour um, with the goal of having, you know, maybe some type of evaluation system and, and rewarding for performance versus step increase. Um, some have a palatability for that versus others. Um, you know, we can we can look at that, but um, you know, but the band also allows a little more flexibility. So you have within the band you have your um, hiring range, and then you have um, sort of your retainability. As people are more tenured, you you have like an extended range that you can move into. Um, so yeah. Any questions? Did you make a motion? We have a second. Oh, caveat. Um, the wage study doesn't apply to union positions. So yeah. um, most union positions have a preset step and grade. So that's that's a whole subject. Yeah, unless, unless it gets changed as it has in the past in within negotiations. If they come to us and ask us to take one off, put one on, and that type of thing, then we have to look at the amount of what the steps actually are. Yeah. Too, we do have that uh, authority to do that. But overall, I, I do think the um, proposed uh, pay grades and, and pay bans are fair and equitable, and they do allow, you know, to kind of move into <coughs> expense for, for a more seasoned, tenured employee. Maybe they don't want to get promoted, but you don't want to lose the institutional knowledge. It does allow some flexibility to provide for that. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. I don't know if we got a second. I'll second. Okay. okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Except for the Okay. Well, that's <laughs> the <laughs> oh, no, that's no. Right. They're, they're not no, here. They're, they're not here. Nine different ones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Got it. I forgot there are a few. 
think that's my only item, so I have to do Well, I was going to ask you, actually, do you mind sticking around for our tr the transition of personnel? Oh, uh, sure, discussion? absolutely. Yeah. yeah I, that's definitely I think amazing. Tim should be here shortly, but... Of course. He's not coming. He isn't coming he's at not, all. He's not okay. Um, he did write you a letter. It was... Um, oh, okay. It's attached for you. Okay, yes. I got the letter. <coughs> I just didn't know if it was attached. <coughs> no. Okay. Do you want to get them? Well, do you want to do that, or do... Let's do... Let's, we could do... Uh, yeah, we can do the Cannabis Control Commission municipal notice. Um, Not that you don't want to hang out with us all night. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But we've got to have somebody in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so, uh, the background, I guess I can just read this. Uh, Heirloom Collective <coughs> Inc.'s application for a marijuana retail license is under review by the Massachusetts Cannabis Control Commission. Pursuant to 935 CMR 500.1021 D, the commission sent notice to inform the town of Hadley the completed adult use marijuana establishment application for uh, the Heirloom Collective. The applicant has indicated its intent to operate in Hadley, and the commission requests that uh, the town of Hadley confirm that the applicant's proposed establishment is in compliance with municipal bylaws or ordinances. <coughs> um, so we know that, you know, the location you guys have selected uh, is zoned for the appropriate use and that, you know, you are currently applying for the special permit through the planning board. Mm -hmm. And, you know, our legal opinion appears to be that that that's that's good, and we can write a, a letter to the CCC just saying that you guys, you know, meet the criteria and are working on the applicable permits. So, yeah. and we think that's good. <laughs> that's what it sounds like. I, yeah. know, I know David had a conversation with uh, legal at the CCC and my other partner, our other partner Jim yeah. Cunahan, and that's that sort of meets. Christian's description meets the spirit of the conversation, it sounds like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I learned that, um, that across the Commonwealth, some communities require that uh, CCC give their permission prior to granting a special permit, setting up a chicken and egg issue. Right. So uh, given the past practice of the CCC, uh, we are in a position of writing a letter that you substantially conform to the bio the zoning bylaws town of Hadley and that you're actively pursuing a special permit to the planning board under section 30 of the zoning bylaws. So that's, that's all that they're looking for. And I think that that's enough to, uh, that the board can vote on tonight. And, and that's, what, that's what will satisfy the CCC in your mind and what you guys agreed to on the call? Based, based upon my, my understanding of how CCC works, that's, that's sufficient. Great. So do you and have a date in front of the planning board at this point? Or? I want to say it's next, next Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah. Tuesday. Okay. So you could, <coughs> you could theoretically have that in hand by their deadline anyway. Right. Uh, we're getting close to that. Yeah, month. it's so the end of the month. January 29th. Yeah, right. Sure, right, yeah. and you're meeting on the 22nd. Yeah. Theoretically, Molly, I love your optimism. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> our, our previous go around took, I don't know, many, many trips okay. to the planning board. Right. But hopefully, this is an, an amendment to the existing uh, site plan approval, mm -hmm. or our existing uh, special permit, rather, is more accurate. Mm -hmm. We're told it should be pretty straightforward. Let's hope it goes that way. So do we need to make a motion to have you submit this letter? Yes, please. Okay, I'll make a motion that we submit the letter in accordance with the um, spirit of Joel Bart's legal counsel. Mm -hmm. Second. Okay, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank Congratulations. you. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank Thanks you very much. much. So, yeah. Good luck. You want to yeah. stick around? Well, we can just well, yeah. transitions of personnel. We'll just do that real quick. So uh, uh, this year we're expecting uh, some changes in town hall, and the first one. Uh, that we're going to be faced with is the retirement of our building inspector. 
who is looking to retire no later than April 16th of 2020, putting us uh, in a position where we need to get that ball rolling of hiring um, some sort of replacement. And uh, he has sent us, is he there? I'm checking. He just said he wasn't coming. I thought, I thought he was. Yeah. He is? I lied. Oh. All right, we can wait. Did you do that? Are we good? Bad Amber Alert. Amber Alert. Amber Alert. Is that the one for the one from Springfield? Here, why don't, we, why don't we pause the transition of personnel discussion and move to public safety emergency generator. And is that good? Oh, well, you want us to? I'm here. You ready? OK, well, let's do transition of personnel. I'm going to stop skipping around. Um, I'm sorry, I, I misunderstood you. Yeah, I, I thought you were coming around seven. I was going to wait, but I didn't know. For Three sure. up, right? Then, then uh, Jennifer said you weren't coming. Then I was like, okay, we'll get started. You're on so, time. You're late. Here. <laughs> yeah. No, you're good. So we we just kind of. Uh, you missed a good dinner. Yeah, I'm sure. You, I thought you were bringing a spread for us to share. <laughs> I could have. I had your tickets. Um, so yeah, that basically, I just said that you know you're looking to retire April 16th of 2020. Um, yeah, that will be, that'll be my know, last day. Yeah. And my retirement day will be the 17th. Okay. Um, and we just need to uh, work on finding some kind of suitable replacement, whatever form that comes in. And mm -hmm. you wrote us a nice letter that details several different options. And, you know, I just want to engage the board and see what we want to do, you know, and to, to summarize it real quick, are we just looking for kind of a direct building commissioner replacement, which could be challenging, um, swapping uh, positions, so to speak, with an alternate inspector and yourself to, mm -hmm. so that alternate inspector could become the building commissioner or looking at partnering with another town uh, where we might have our own local inspector but share a building commissioner. Um, I think or I share both of them. Or share both of them. Yes. Yeah, so there's a lot of kind of options on the table, but I think we kind of need to narrow it down a little bit so we can move forward in a direction mm -hmm. um, in, the, in the time we have because we only have, you know, three, three months three or months. so. Um, so. <laughs> that, that, that will get us close. <laughs> so what's what's X thought on this? Yeah. Uh, a little new to figure it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <coughs> you know, uh, my, my only thing, I guess my only question is, what's in the best interest for the town of Hadley? Is it um, a set commissioner or, or the shared services model? What's the most sustainable and beneficial to the town? So. Um, you know, that would have to be a real well thought out detailed plan. Um, so it's, that, that's really my only thought is just considering that that balance. Um, you know, if we have our, our own um, commissioner or inspector and their salary that allows us more flexibility. I know there's a little tie in with the fire chief during inspections. Um, so I, I <laughs> or a lot, you know, um, so, you know, if we entered an agreement with the town, I, I, I would hate to see it go in a direction that wasn't productive for both towns, because then it's a disservice to everyone. So that's really my only thought, is making sure we have a well thought out detailed plan. And I think if you look <coughs> between the towns around us, that I think that um, a commissioner in Hadley is more important than what, we have a lot more building going on than actually what Amherst or Northampton has. I think we're busier than what they are. And I, we are. And I, I would hate the thought of having to share it with either one of them. Um, I think we ought to be the main base. Um, and if we thought we had the time to share with another community, then that would be a benefit to us. But I think we need a de our own designated person. Yeah, I, I, I feel similarly. I think a shared service would be a good model, but I feel like kind of what you're saying too, Ed, is we have three months. That's a very, compl not complicated, but it's outside the norm of what we're doing right now. And so to try to do that and the amount of time we have might be putting ourselves in jeopardy of losing services or trying to fill it in for a period where we can't 
do it. So kind mm -hmm. of having that replacement person would be good. And then filling out how to maybe expand the department or something. Because I feel like, you know, you have a lot of experience. You've been doing this job for a long time. So you can, you know, do a lot where one person coming in new might not be able to quite step in and do you quite as much. You look too easy. Yeah. Too yeah. <laughs> and I think it's going to be very challenging. Yeah. And, uh, and I've been truthful with all of you before. I am not doing all that I could yeah. or should do. And I think this <coughs> is a good time to really look at it seriously and say, you know, let's take the steps that need it. And the reason, you got the money. The money's coming in. So, like I said in the, in the letter, if you bring in a local, there's a, there's a number of things that I'm doing that the local can do at a lower salary. Mm -hmm. The our problem that we'll face, I really hope, I've been talking to David a lot and he's spearheading this, I really hope that, that there is a good fit out there for partnering with the town. Mm -hmm. and it, it might not happen. But I think with the, if that can happen, I think it's good for both of us because there, you can transition back and forth between those duties. Mm -hmm. there, there definitely needs to be a local. Now, should it be full-time or part-time? That's up to you guys. The real problem is there's not enough inspectors out there. And to try to find a good fit with somebody that's good part-time might be very difficult. Yeah. Most of our towns around us, Northampton too, is experiencing really difficult times and getting the help that they need for those towns. Mm -hmm. And when we've been having any discussions about shared, the possibility of shared services, my understanding is that we were we were looking to a smaller town, not to right a smaller town. Yeah, so, that's right. exactly right. Yeah. Go to a smaller town. And there, I mean, there is a good fit, and the hope is it will work. Mm -hmm. um, but it, there's a lot of discussion that needs to happen. David's brought up some very valid points on if that, if you can do it. Uh, there are issues that that nobody's actually ever faced. Has, is this happening now? Yes, it is in this in the eastern part of the states only because there's not sure. enough guys out yes. there. Yeah. Uh, I, I think it's going to actually start to be the norm. And you're going to see what's happened down in some other states. And that's how it's how the fit is happening. You're sharing <coughs> qualified guys that are very specific in certain duties, i.e. motels versus high rise and things like that. We're not certainly not there, but um, I, I wish there was more certified inspectors out there. It's extremely difficult to become certified right now. <coughs> I am certainly an advocate to get this changed at the state level. I'm, I'm very vocal about it because of what's happened with one particular person that I thought was extremely valuable to be an inspector and they shot the person down for meaning here's the problem they have to vote to allow you to take the exams how ludicrous can that be and that's a state board this say. is the state board yeah. of building regulations and standards you can't just go ahead and take the exams and isn't there, is there like an apprenticeship period too where you have to do x number of with the local, yes. Yeah. You, you, as I put in the paper, um, you, you, yeah. The first step is to be approved to take the local inspector, pass all the exams, and there are a number of them. Yeah. And then you have to get the title, meaning you have to work for a town to become a local inspector. Right. And then you have to be approved again to take the next set of exams to become a building commissioner. And then take the take those. 
there's the there's been the problem yeah. at the state level. <clears throat> but I think, I mean, I've I've made a lot of suggestions to you yeah. on what can happen. I don't know all the ramifications one over another, politics and whatnot. I mean, you can certainly go out and advertise and see what's there. Yeah, it's going to be predicated on what you you advertise, if at all, advertise the salary. Mm -hmm. But certainly, you know, the the um, the the people in house right now, they, they can apply just like anybody else. Would. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I don't see that as a major issue. Um, but it's. And I, I've told David, and I've certainly told you, Christian. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to let the town hang. Yeah, yeah, I know. I mean, I'm I'm here. I'm part of this town, and uh, if it's the idea of switching titles, I'm perfectly happy with that. Mm -hmm. well, I think there's three brand new buildings that would really appreciate you staying the course. <laughs> <laughs> I think two will be, be done, yeah. done, hopefully, by the time they. Uh, but yeah, I mean, whatever <laughs> needs to be done, I'm not going to. At this, just walk away at this point funding wise i mean your your estimate guesstimate of eleven thousand dollars is not much but from the full-time commissioner to a regional commissioner is only uh twenty-one thousand dollars so it's not not an ex extraordinary amount of money no and based Between, on the amount of money that we are bringing in and we we have substantially increased the fees to cover this and other issues that we're faced with and there's a lot of things that we need to do and certainly it's the hope that we can accomplish them but we need bodies to do it yeah so do we want to form a committee like we've done in the past to hire um, you know this level position uh, you know it definitely be good to have a fire chief on there and you know and obviously it would be on there but I don't know if we want to do anything along those lines or how we want to handle this hiring <coughs> process yeah and I think this exploratory process maybe it's going to be direction though yeah right so and do we do we run kind of a bifurcated path yeah. and post but then ask David to continue conversations with other whatever other, other communities yeah. you might have had in mind so that we're not you know, just yeah, I think killing that's one idea, idea completely. Yeah. We can't hurt to keep the conversation going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, you first. You get. I, I just want to say, uh, being a little bit selfish, but I've worked with them for a long time, and we have a very rare thing in, in Hadley. I've heard nightmares, and Tim has too. You don't normally have the partnership between the fire department and the building commissioner or building department like we do here. So I would truly hope that Tim would you know, his recommendations on, on the person that will be doing this, um, it, it's critical because we, I don't know how we would, I don't think, I think Tim would probably the same thing. I don't, I don't know how it, I would do it without him. Yeah. And I think he feels the same way. We kind of, we kind of fill in those gaps for each other and um, in an effort not to take a step back just because you've seen my office, you know, we have 30 projects going on right now plus the other 1800 inspections we have to do. Um, it's it's just something we've got to hit the ground running. You can't have, you know, it's going to be tough to have a, a learning period for this. I understand yeah. that might have to happen, but... It's going um, to happen either way. As long as... Um, Luckily, this is a small town, and the DPW, and the fire, and the police, and the building, and the Board of Health, and everybody's worked together over the years, you know? Everybody kind of knows what everybody else is doing here, you know? Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, most of the time. <coughs> so I, I think that's probably a good idea. It's kind of a parallel path, you know, put it out like it's a replacement, but then pursue other options and kind of see what comes together and see what comes And I totally agree with you. Yeah. Uh, yes, you can actually do all three at the same time and, yeah. and then make the decision. Go out and advertise see who's out see there. Yeah. Again, I think we have one person that is a great fit mm -hmm. that person can apply yeah but in the I end if that you, know, apply, you yeah. can yeah. you can hire him yeah right. just change the titles yeah if that's doable mm -hmm. and if if something works out with 
with what David's doing with partnering up with the town. That, is, to me, is the greatest fit that we can actually have. Yeah. But I, I emphasize that that you need to really pursue, maybe not right now, but very soon, you need to get a local inspector involved. Mm -hmm. We have way too much going on. There's a lot of things that we could really benefit with an extra person in there. Maybe there's a retired building commissioner that lives in Hadley that would want to do a few hours a week. With a you know, <laughs> you know. Unfortunately, this is a position that get, he burns people out yeah. big time, yeah. and the ones that do come back, they're coasting. Yeah. And I, I mean, I've gone through that route many times. Yeah. And it it isn't there. Okay. This is a very Unfortunately, it's become a very difficult job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, I know. Not as much as that poor guy, <laughs> yeah. but close to it. Yeah. Well, yeah. let's go out to bid. Let's set up a uh, job description. Job description. Yeah. yeah, so I'll schedule some time with Tim. I'm a little ignorant when it comes to inspections. I just know you kind of walk in, you look. Mm -hmm. In code or not in code, so. <laughs> and since um, David is here tonight, we can nominate him to serve on the committee. <clears throat> I think that makes <laughs> But um, we'll, we'll come up with, so, yeah. but just to be clear, at a minimum, we need a full-time building inspector. That's you need a building commissioner. That is a requirement by, co by law. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is a requirement. And you can't just hire anybody. No, I understand that. <laughs> yeah. But, but yes, each town must have a building commissioner. Okay. Don't have to have a local, but you have to have a building commissioner. Yeah. But if, uh, let's just say everything falls apart, what does Hadley absolutely need to make sure things can get developed? Like, we got to figure that out. So I'll, I'll sit down with Tim. We'll come up with a good job description and kind of... Go from there, get it posted. I mean, everything's running around the mass journal. Has it? Have you got a copy of this letter? Or yeah, I do. I, I read it uh, this morning and yesterday. But yeah. like I said, maybe there's something I misread. I don't fully understand the, the difference, but we'll we'll figure it out. Okay. Should somebody from the Board of Health also? <coughs> I'm just thinking about keeping the work together. If there's going to be. I work more closely with Mike and then um, the the police chief. Okay. But I, I did talk about <coughs> on, on what we can do mm -hmm. at that front. Mm -hmm. I think there is things that we can improve on. Yeah. Okay. okay. And I have a meeting on Friday with a uh, local town administrator to talk about shared services. So okay. I can give some information at that time. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I don't see any reason why, again, let's just explore all of the options and land on what's going to work best for us. Yeah. I think you need to cast your net as far as it is possible. Yep. Yeah. And I think having a few people that can work on it is good. Um, so be it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And anybody on the select board want to be on there? <laughs> Let's wait for the posting. And see we want to wait for that? Yeah. We want to wait for that? Okay. Details. Okay. Yeah, then we can formalize the committee. Okay, yeah. Let everybody be there. Okay. But start there and, uh, you know. Yeah. The sooner we can get it posted, the better. So posting is the easy part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Well, creating it and yeah, yeah, yeah all that. Well, there's stuff. enough. There's n enough um, uh, advertisements out there that we certainly oh, can yeah. put something together sure. mm -hmm. that fits on uh, what they're what Hadley needs. Okay. okay. Great. Okay. So well, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for all the work you put into this. I know. Thank you, Tim, for getting that to us and um, everything else. So. I apologize. I wanted to oh, have yeah. it to you. A long time ago, but you know yeah. the reason why. So. You seem better, so hopefully. I, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm a lot better. <laughs> that's good. There yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Unfortunately, yeah. Don't have the sunglasses on today. So <laughs> that's a good sign. <laughs> I don't have my shades on yeah. anymore, yeah, yeah, which yeah, is yeah. great. Stays with you for a while, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. well thank it you. Still bothers me. Though. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Jen Raider. Well, we have one more. Uh, I want I'll let David take over. Okay. One more, more. One more transition. Oh, okay. I didn't see it there. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry, ready to go to the next agenda. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> well, I'll make it quick then. Yeah. Yeah. No. yeah. All right, so uh, the, the board very generously uh, extended my contract to December 31st, 2020, and I'm letting the public know that my intention is not to renew 
at that time, so on the last day will be December 31st of this year, uh, giving a year's notice. Um, and I will assist in any way with any kind of transition. Uh, I recommend that uh, we begin with an internal review, that offer the position internally. I think you have some talent on board. Uh, I don't know if they're interested in taking over my job, but there are people who could do it. If, if that uh, does not uh, bear fruit, then I uh, would expect you to do an external review. Uh, with an eye towards hiring a candidate by July 1st. And one of the things that we need to be aware of is that right now all the towns are in budget season, mm -hmm. and that's a really bad time to be searching for a new town administrator. Uh, the good town administrators are not going to leave their communities in the middle of budget season. Uh, so, but if you uh, expect to hire by July 1st, we can have a uh, we can have a six-month overlap where I can assist this person to come up to speed so that there's continuity and minimum of disruption. Um, and uh, I also expect that you probably will be talking to professional recruiting firms, which will have a presence at the MMA trade show uh, in two weekends from now. Uh, this is a model that has served very well in other towns with AAA bond ratings that you have a long period of both notice, a um, long period of looking for the right candidate, uh, and then the transition time where that candidate is brought on board and becomes the go-to person, and then I become, take a much more supportive role rather than the frontline <coughs> role of town administrator. Uh, I think that's the best way to handle this transition. Well, thank you for your service to the town and thank for giving us this notice so that we can make it a, I think, a really good transition. So, mm -hmm. um, and that will be our, our next thing to work on. So I don't know how we want to start our, our searches or, you know, uh, how we would go about an internal search, uh, announce that type of thing, but yeah. something I mean, I, worth I considering. <coughs> <coughs> I think in the spirit of offering it to folks internally, making sure everybody's well aware of it, um, mm -hmm. but I think it can be a very condensed time frame. I think if there's anybody out there who's been, <coughs> if anybody wants it, they've yeah. already been thinking about it, and I would think that they would come, come <coughs> forward fairly quickly. Mm -hmm. um, because I don't want to delay going out externally if that's the direction we're going to go in too long. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to. Yeah, I don't know. So if you if you post something internally, is there a time requirement, or could you literally do like a one one or two week post? Um, yeah, I mean you could do you know two to three week posting like you would in a normal position. Okay, so like uh, one to two. One to two. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know would, that they count. There's there no there's no real law that says you have to advertise <coughs> for a certain time. You know, I, I would say two weeks is the probably the industry standard. Yeah. So I mean, I, I would have, um, you know accept the recommendation that yeah. we uh, today's the fifteenth. So by like July, July uh, January, woo, January thirty first, you know that would be the end of that. And then in the meantime, I think we should be working and have the external like ready to go immediately. Sure. Is that fair? Yeah, I think that's fair. And then how about as far as uh, that working this oh. time? If it, the yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, and I was going to ask too, just about a professional recruiting firm, if that's something we would be interested in pursuing or not pursuing. Yeah, I mean, you have a number of options. Community paradigm is, is pretty frequent in, in government postings. Yeah. Um, the particular school at UMass Boston, the name is escaping me. They do a lot Collins. of executive searches. Um, and not yeah. Collins. 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 Um, so there's, actually, there's quite a few out there. Actually, the beacon. Yeah. Where, 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 did you, where did you find the advertisement for your position? Uh, indeed. <laughs> that, uh, Thank you. The or maybe, beacon, I mean, we've advertised in the beacon before, or even for both positions. <coughs> Yeah, yeah, I think that's a good You know, totally the building, <coughs> building commissioner and the administrator. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, it's worth to see what's out there. Yeah. I mean, we We've had, we've had a great selection again with with the HR person, so 
Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, for you know, I haven't been here very long, but I, you know, I appreciate that you respect my opinion. Um, I think for um, where Hadley is at and the momentum to keep it stride, I think you would get more bang for your buck using a professional service. Um, I think that's just you know for for where Hadley is going and where we are right now between the. Uh, AAA bond rating. We've got some com complex issues with uh, marijuana and the Route 9 widening. I think it would be in the town's best interest to use a professional firm. Okay. When you think of Hadley in the long run, uh, <coughs> my predecessor was here for 16 years. Uh, I'm going to be here for about 16 years. So for the last 30 plus years, we've had two town administrators. So I think that. Um, you want somebody who is going to stay a long time, do good work, move the town forward. Uh, I think that I agree. Working with a professional recruiting firm uh, is going to be in your long-term best interest. Well, the other thing I just want to throw out is that you know I I know we've talked an awful lot about the governance of the town. Um, chart, you know, whether or not we should adopt some form of a charter and move to oh, either a strong, here we go. Okay, a strong <laughs> town administrator or a town <laughs> Um And because, I mean, that obviously hasn't happened and you can't <coughs> switch horses midstream right now, but I would strongly encourage us to be thinking during the hiring process that I, I believe that's an inevitability. Um, you know, whenever it happens because of, of the growth of the town scene, I think the many of the employees actually are, are looking for that to happen. Um, they haven't been given the opportunity to, to speak about it, but if and when the time comes, we should have an eye towards the new town administrator as being somebody who may be capable of assuming that role as well. Because you don't want to hire somebody and then a year and a half, two years, five years down the road even say, okay, well, you know, we're moving yeah. to a town manager, you don't have the skill sets, whatever. So I'm just I'm very tossing that in there. about not following Amherst's thing for their charter. Amherst, no. the Amherst has a town City council, no. a town yeah. manager. No. I just no, that's, don't. A yeah. that's a whole different ball well, I know, choice. but I'm no, no, yeah. a lot if of you're looking at everything, every time we talk about it, I get calls about it. <clears throat> people will, people will try to. We'll try to what? Model after different things. So I mean, you have to. Well, it's up to the select board to bring it to town meeting. And, and again, that, that's why people spend so much time and, and thought, um, you know, thinking through this and interviewing and finding out what works in other towns. I think, again, if you interview a lot of our own employees, you're going to hear people extremely frustrated with the decision-making process and the lack of accountability in the town. And we've been talking about it. We haven't done anything about it. you guys on the day-to-day -day stuff that you're dealing with. And again, and five part-time people. That's not what the select board should be. Right. And I totally agree with what you're saying, Mama. It Thank needs you. to go forward in a different direction. Yeah. We are stifling ourselves in a lot of these daily decisions and getting us. It's it's not counter. It's counterproductive. It's not productive in getting efficient decisions made. I'm not saying that the decisions are wrong. It's just the time frame on a lot of this stuff. Yeah, I know sitting in the chair position, this is my first year doing it, and it's, you know, it's a big time commitment and having somebody that was had more of a leadership role underneath the select board would be, you I mean, David does a great job, but it's hard being yeah. a volunteer and doing all these things and being you responsible for all these things. And just signing off on strategic issues not daily stuff that a strong town administrator can handle. Yeah. The employment issues and everything else that mm -hmm. you deal with. And I, I'm, I, I totally agree with Molly on that. And, I, and she is absolutely right that <coughs> most employees feel the same way as I do. Mm -hmm. It's nothing against anybody. No, no, no. It's no, just no. the whole way that we're handling yeah. this stuff and it's starting to be so cumbersome because of the complexity of a lot of stuff we do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sorry. It's a $20 million organization. We have to look at it like one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. 
exactly. it's not an organization, it's a business. Well, that's what I'm saying, yeah. it's a 20 it's a million business. dollar it's entity, a it's a business. Yeah. Yeah. And a business it's wouldn't run with a, a, town. It's a, a business. you know, a rotating five person board and nobody running the show. Yeah. And I do happen. agree with you, Joyce. No, you don't want to be an Amherst. Yes. And that yeah, is yeah, so yeah. different. Yeah, yeah. Just mm -hmm. We are unique, yeah. and I think that we can do better at what we're doing. Yeah, I think we just need to tweak it more yes. to what our needs are and what our wants are, because I don't think anybody wants to get rid of town meeting. Nobody wants to get rid of the no, select board. Absolutely no one. We want to keep all those things. It's just how do we... You know, reorganize yeah. ourselves to be better at what we're doing. Yeah. And, and so, only so it's the bottom line is money. So Everything. it took us all this time to get an HR director. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's taken us a long time to do IT and other projects mm -hmm. that we've got done. But it's, it's just not, you don't have a tree out there no, to pick anymore. But I think it and can people be are tired, I'm going to say it. We spent a lot of money this past year. Yes, yeah. And it showed with the last elections that they did not want to increase their taxes anymore mm -hmm. at this point in time. No, I think what you're also seeing is a lot of people saying, it should be part of capital. Start putting Some the stuff in the capital yes. instead of out there for voting. Yes. And I Yeah, for overrides. And right. I'm one of those people that I've been harping on that forever. Yeah. It mm -hmm. should be part of capital. Mm -hmm. well, That's what it's for. That's cash. what we all voted for. We don't even have certified cash yet. <laughs> yeah, it's a problem. That's really yeah. pathetic. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, oh, let's, not let's not digress. Let's not digress. So you know, I, yeah. I obviously Amherst has a town council and a town manager. Yeah. They've got a like a thirty population of thirty thousand people. They're essentially a small city. Mm -hmm. We still want to keep small town feel. There's some great options, some hybrid options between representative <laughs> town meeting. You can consolidate boards and commissions, not to give you more work, but under the select board, the select board could take on some of that additional. You're already here four hours once a week. What's a couple more? Uh, <laughs> um, you, you do have some great options that I think could streamline the structure of your government. There's a couple more elected positions that you might be able to move toward appointed mm -hmm. um, that are some great short-term options while you have a committee established to uh, move forward with a charter. Um, I've done yeah. a lot of reading over the last couple of weeks, so I, I think, I, I think and you'll be able to, I think you would get the town to probably be able to vote on it. Um, especially if it uh, involves getting a license moved through a little bit quicker, I think some people will jump at that bit. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so I'm in my 17th year. I was here when David was married. <coughs> I remember that. And, uh, I think, you know, you've had your ups and downs and ins and outs, and you've had lots of different people sitting on this board, and yeah. you fought the fight for sure, but you've gotten us where we are, so never been an easy job and thank you for your diligence that you've given Hadley over the years. Thank you. It's been yeah. an honor and privilege to come to work every day. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and I have to say one of the things I've most admired about you is your thick skin. Like a rhinoceros. <laughs> right. Right. Yes. <laughs> like Joyce, I started on finance committee uh, and you were mentoring me and it was your first year as town administrator. <coughs> And I remember many times sitting in your office looking at each other like, what have we gotten ourselves into? <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah. an another 12 months to come. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. yeah. We have, we'll have many good months working sure. together. We have a lot of good work to do. Oh, yes. Time, time. <coughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Tim, for all you um, What? I, I just okay. had a question. Has there been any consideration of using a headhunter for the uh, the link commissioner? Not yet. Um, that yeah. doesn't mean that we couldn't, you know. I mean, I'm hearing how hard it is to find people. That's what those people do. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, I yes, think I think when you're at the trade show and you're talking to yeah. professional recruiting outfits, mm -hmm. Uh, why not talk about the two positions? Yeah, yeah. we can yeah. find out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Just so you know that the all, there's three building official associations in the state. As soon as it is advertised in one town, it is to every town. Everyone gets that okay. immediately. Okay. So we we do have. 
it'll get around the entire state. Mm -hmm. It won't go beyond the state, but it will stay. It will go to every town. Okay. Are there any yeah. other states that their building commissioner license carries over to Massachusetts? No. 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 Okay. There, what state. I said was uh, you can ask for the waiver. Yeah. There are some states that have, um, <coughs> that they, they go through the same certification okay. process. Yeah. I'll get the process started. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, just asking. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. <coughs> all right, we'll end that there. More to be continued as far as all those items go, and uh, should be an adventure. And if you are set, that was everything. Yeah, I, had for I, you, I should so tell you, I got uh, like two and a half weeks of military leave coming up. Okay. So this will all be ready to go before I go on military. Oh, when is that? Uh, or roughly. I just sent it out to everybody too, not too long okay. ago. Uh, the 27th to the 14th, so January 27th. To okay. Uh, and I'll be available while I'm, I'm not like going anywhere crazy. I'm just going to Fort Lewis, Washington. So okay. I'll be available. Okay. Washington State. Washington State. Wow. Super close. Say again? I'll go with relatives. <laughs> <laughs> That's where my mom is. I'll bring Tuesday. you back some coffee or something. Um, exactly. Okay, let's move to the public safety <coughs> complex emergency generator. Thanks, Tim. Thank, Thank you, Tim, for yeah. coming. Thank you very much. Back for dessert. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So our emergency generator, speaking of the <coughs> recent election, uh, was the <coughs> turned down by the voters. I think it failed by one vote. Uh, and so now we're faced with looking for... Thank you alternative forms of funding. As Joyce mentioned as well, we still do not have certified free cash. So that is a possible um, solution to our problem if we had some free cash available for this purchase, but we don't know that yet. And that would require a town meeting vote. Um, I don't know uh, if, if, Chief, you have some stuff, some updates for us on the generator. And then maybe David can go through some of the options that he's laid out. Yes. Yeah. So, um, so as you all know, the generator <coughs> actually failed the night before the vote. Yeah. And so we've been we've been wrangling with portable generators that we were having some issues with. Um, yesterday, myself and John met with, uh, and also Scott McCarthy from DPW. We met with our FM generator rep. So they're the service company that. Um, does the, the maintenance on our, our, our piece. And that morning they actually installed the new starter, uh, that had, which was the cause of the failure. So the, the current generator is now back online. Um, and I had asked you to postpone just so I could get some information. Uh, I just wanted to have all of our ducks in a row so everybody's very aware of what's happening and why it's so important that this, this, this occur, that this isn't, um, this isn't something that's, you know, where this is a an actual need. It's not a want. Um, so we met with this gentleman. His name's Stephen, and he sits on pretty much every NFPA standard committee, UL committee. Uh, John can attest. He really seems like he knows what he's talking about. Uh, we <coughs> are, however, still going to be bringing in a couple other companies to get some additional opinions. But I can tell you that FM Generator is one of the <coughs> companies that I know of that's actually listed on MEMA's site as an approved vendor. They are on the state contract, and um, we have had good success with them as far as them taking care of what we have. So the existing Cato Light that we have, he came out and kind of went through it with us. Uh, we went through the system, how it's set up, and it has, basically it was manufactured in 1992. The station was built in 96. So uh, the, the engine manufacturer actually went out of business 21 years ago. So it's at the end of its serviceable life. So in order to get parts, you're, you're, it's third party, it's aftermarket parts, it's people going out into their shed, pulling equipment out to see if we can find parts that are from old, old pieces. Um, so the building has uh, come to find out we are not fully generated by, by this generator. There is one one breaker panel that apparently is not provided um, generated power. So we went through all this and took a look at the system as a whole. Um, 
and, and so we discussed what our options were for what we wanted to put in new to make sure that we're going down the right <coughs> road. Uh, according to him, he feels that the generator that we currently have was oversized a little bit. Uh, so he's recommending that uh, he, he feels that we don't need the same size that we put in. Uh, he did factor in for if down the road we decided to, we have in our DA or the DRA report, an additional bay expansion and some other work being done at the center station. So we wanted to make sure that if that ever happened down the road, we would be able to provide the generated power to that, that space. <coughs> and then to also pick up whatever's remaining on uh, that's not generated on generated power right now to make sure that that's all all picked up so the building would truly fully be generated power on generated power um, basically we went through multiple options uh, their their main brand that they they uh, are recommending it's called a blue star tier one uh, it's built in Wisconsin we're trying to find something that's built in the United States so it's the parts are easier to get um, it has a Perkins motor in it. Uh, it's, it would be applicable to the station. And we, we had a long discussion as to how we want to power it. So as of right now, it's powered by natural gas. Uh, in his opinion, uh, this gentleman feels that uh, there are some concerns with natural <coughs> gas. Uh, we haven't had any issues with it being supplied by natural gas. But if you think of the moratorium we have, if you think about the explosions in the Merrimack Valley, if you think about the structure of our area here, if there's any interruption in natural gas service, then you're pretty much, you don't have a generator. Uh, so we were in discussions with him uh, and he, his recommendation was switching to a diesel supply generator. Um, that way we would be able to, we could fill it ourselves. So we could call up carriage oil, we could call up Cerner oil, we could call it, we could have our DPW come over with their transfer tank if for some reason we ran out of fuel and fill it. In an emergency like what happened in 2011, uh, they couldn't get propane. We had propane tanks over at the water station. They couldn't get propane delivered. We were, they were running pretty low to keep that up in mind for the drinking water side. We were lucky enough with the 10 pump stations we got on the wastewater side that they were all diesels except for one natural gas that we that we do have. But uh, we ended up just getting carriage with a truck one day when the roads were passable to fill up all the generators, whatever was running, because a plant at the time ran for seven days on the generator. You know, the power was out that long. So uh, NFPA, well, go ahead. No, you're, you can finish, that's fine. Yeah, NFPA um, rates the generators at 24 hours of runtime at 300 gallons, which is a fairly small tank. But that's it, you have to remember that's at full capacity. That's so that's full, yeah. the okay. entire, full everything, the maximum. Okay. So if, you, if you're gonna actually equate that, you're looking at probably 72 yeah. hours. Yes, but 72 hours is what he was estimating. Um, again, with the water and the wastewater, they go by 100% uh, days. I think we were at seven days and DEP changed the regulations to, I mean, five days. I think we change, uh, they changed to seven days now of capacity, which is kind of outrageous. But in, in a natural disaster though, if, if there is an earthquake here or something, let's say, you're not gonna have natural gas. I can tell you that right now. Is it interchangeable with other fuels like JP8? So we were basically, so there's some negatives too. So we have the new biodiesel that can be can be an issue with um, with the generator. So you have, you may because have more. Emission standards. Yeah, so emission standards have to be met, but also just maintenance. So uh, they said if you're not careful, you have to make sure that you're maintaining it <laughs> so that you don't have water building up in the tank and plugging up your filters and so it's, he, he kind of said that it's not, not all unicorns and rainbows on the, the oil side either. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we also did discuss a dual fuel. So diesel fuel, running on diesel, primary diesel with a backup of natural gas, which it doesn't switch to natural gas, it but the diesel is supported by natural gas. So it extends your runtime of the generator. So it's kind of like our compressed air foam system on our fire truck. We had air and foam to our water and we quadruple the amount of water that we have. So it would extend the time, the runtime of the generator. So 
we're looking at that at that as one another possibility. So, um, and his max his maximum uh, life expectancy of the generator that we have right now is basically 20 years, which is a year. It's ago. at it's at 28 right now. Oh, 28. Okay. Yeah. So we've got generators that we've had this discussion quite a few times. Uh, we've got generators from back in 1976 in some of the pump stations, you know. The generator was a civil defense generator at Hopkins Academy that just ran the boilers at one time. Mm -hmm. I mean, this discussion's been going on for 30 years that I've been around with, with civil defense and with emergency preparedness. So mm -hmm. somewhere we really need to look at this issue and, and, and address it. So, so he really gave us some really good information. However, we want to do, we want to take a look at a couple other companies. So John has scheduled his local rep who does Cummins for Kohler. Uh, Kohler, yeah, Kohler's tomorrow. Uh, okay. Cummins didn't get back to me yet. But okay. I'm sure he'll give me a call and I'll get a hold of you. So. Will you leave a card with uh, Deputy so I can give sure. it to the guy tomorrow? So basically, I, we just wanted to, we have some options. The generator is now operational. Uh, one short-term recommendation was they have a remote monitoring system that we can install onto our generator tomorrow if we want. It's about $1,500. It allows for us to do for them, our, our servicing company, to monitor the generator remotely. And it also allows us on our cell phones. So if there's something that's going on, there's some sort of a warning coming up, it's overheating, there's uh, something, some sort of fluctuation in that generator, it will notify us and we can get things rolling right away. That unit would then also be, um, we would be able to use that unit on the new the new piece as well. So it wouldn't be like, or we're getting this and we have to throw away $1,500. We could actually, it would be part of the new generator when that is installed. Uh, it does cost $200, uh, $200 a year to monitor it, but I think it would probably be well worth it at this point. We can also increase our, our uh, we're semi-annual right now for our inspections. We could increase it to monthly for the time being until we figure this out. Um, they're working on a price for that for us. If you wanted to go down that option, just so we have eyes on it every month. And that way it would have provide us a little bit more time to actually put together a plan to come up with the funding and present it at the next town meeting perhaps, uh, or make it part of next year's budget. Uh, they are also willing, as long as we can ensure that it would be paid, they are willing to do a purchase <coughs> order. It's uh, for, for, the, uh, for the diesel fuel uh, generators, it's about an 18 week build time. So there's, there's time, we wouldn't be getting it tomorrow if we ordered it. Natural gas uh, is a bit shorter, it's about, it's about four to six weeks. Um, so like I said, we're trying, to, we're trying to get all our ducks in a row on the information first and then I just wanted to bring that, all that information to you and just see what your thoughts are on the plan of action. Um, I, I have a call into Mass Emergency Management. They basically said the same thing that they said when we had the, the, the shutdown. Uh, they have those list of vendors that we could, you know, we can call up and request for them to drop off a generator here. Uh, that is another potential option. We could keep a mobile generator on site as a backup. However, uh, you would be paying, I mean, it was pretty pricey for the two weeks that we had it. Uh, and it still would require them to come out and, and hook it up because none of us are qualified uh, to do that. I think spending the 1500 for the monitoring makes an awful lot of sense because the, the earliest we're going to be able to move forward looks like would be after the next or the annual town meeting. So, I mean, a lot can happen between now and then. And does the generator fire like once a week or something like that? And Every Monday it runs. Okay, okay, yeah. It runs for 15 or 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. and. Like I said, this, this generator's been doing that. Uh, actually, we, I'm not sure, I don't have records of the maintenance prior to when I took it over um, following when, when Hucky left. Um, but, you know, it's, we've, we've been religious. And we have, the only, the only thing I wanna warn you about is that we, it's just concerning because we're, this is, I, I, I don't think, I want people to understand that when this fails, if we lose, mainline power and this generator doesn't fire up. Our station goes black. We have 20 to 25 minutes of battery backup. We actually purchased bigger battery backup for our dispatch console. Um, but, you know, 
if we don't have something that's firing up and providing that generator power, we lose our 911, we lose our, all of our computers shut down for dispatching police and fire. We do have a backup plan where we move our dispatchers into our mobile trailer. We actually set that, put, it, put that into place when that, when that happened. We were lucky that we got mainline power back on, but because the generator was down, we kept it in place. And that way, if it did go off again, uh, we were in conversations with Eversource. They reassured us it wouldn't happen. But we had that trailer running and ready with the heat on. So if we had to move our dispatchers out there to do something, uh, they could. But they, we still wouldn't have, have the ability to, to answer 911 calls. Mm -hmm. It would have been going to our, our backup, which is East Hampton. So okay. just want everybody to understand the ramifications of this. So it's a little bit nerve wracking right now. Yeah. yeah, and again, I think I'm just going to state the obvious. In retrospect, you know, we can't unring the bell, but, you know, we should have handled this differently. So I, I think everybody's kind of learned that when it's something this critical, we're not going to hopefully do that again, put it out to the voters. Well, the free cash didn't help the whole situation, too. So. Oh, I know. I'm just yeah. saying, you know, yeah. I think it goes to, you know, <clears throat> kind of rethinking how we're doing the capital oh, yeah. again. You know, yeah. Even if we had to put it half in a police and half in a fire budget right now for next year, which is only <coughs> five months <coughs> away now. Five <laughs> yeah. months away now. Oh, yeah, I don't recommend that course of action yeah. at this time. Uh, I, I like selling the French Street property. David, do you want to go through our options? Right Possible right. options? One time right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so... I think your best option is to borrow the hundred uh, five thousand, and that's still the price, right? We're gonna say that's the price for right now, just it, until it we seems, get. Seems up. to be a little less, but. All right. No. I think borrowing within the levy is your best bet. Uh, that requires a town meeting vote. You could call a special town meeting, or we can wait till the annual town no, meeting. No, let's do that again. <coughs> Yeah, I mean, I think if we have the monitoring in place and whatever um, yeah, the mean, chief and the committee May, recommended. Yes. Or we should make it to yeah. May. That's why I wanted for you to yeah. wait on making the step until we have the yeah. true facts and, and we'll, information. we'll have three accurate codes to look yeah. at, mm -hmm. roughly. And I think all three of them are on state bids. So yeah. then, you, then you'll have something to look at and mm -hmm. make up your mind which one of them. So why, why, are we not, why couldn't we sell the property? Why are we holding on to that? One twenty one. Uh, that is an option. That's yeah, a great that option. We don't want to be just in for three out of six. We'll have to find it. Fifteen hundred for the fit to that, that property to take care of. It's got to go back in the general fund. Huh? <coughs> it doesn't no, it uh, to sale of property. The uh, proceeds go into a special stabilization account, which you can then appropriate by town meeting vote for any legal purpose. Oh, that so, town meeting though. Yeah, yeah. So let's see what happens between now and then. But I mean, again, yeah. all roads mm -hmm. are leading to town meeting. Yeah. I agree with you right now. In the absence of that, doing it within the levy seems to be the yeah. logical choice. And I mean, you could use free cash, but at this time, I cannot t tell you that yeah. you're going to have sufficient free cash to perform that maneuver. Right, and we so understand that with the free cash is there, that again, we this is a two-year proposition yeah, right. yeah. So we need to be looking you know, at that bucket yeah. for two years in uh, 2011 they had a grant program through the state and I see that, you want to talk is it and I see you talking yeah. about Republican carry see if there's any available I mean representative, representative. <laughs> 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 maybe that's an option is that is there that is an option a grant available a right a grant for it no. um that would Nothing. be a state appropriation yeah that would be baking it right into the state budget uh it is an election year uh there is going to be more money on the table yeah um it will take longer for that money to become available yeah, yeah you can get it to the end of, uh, end of summer we need to get free cash yeah. you have to go i guess too right that's got a question yeah, David, this is just a, you know how uh, if we declare a state of emergency, it opens up the funds from all departments? You know how if that emergency declaration yeah. is declared? Yeah. Does that include projects or is it only town budgets? Well, this, you can legitimately call this a, an emergency and do uh, expedited uh, uh, bidding and, exp and, uh, and also 
uh, uh, to expend money above and beyond. <coughs> the, the problem is you're going to have to make it back up at your next t annual town meeting. And where those funds to make up the difference come from, at this point in time, I can't tell you you're going to have those funds. Right. So my question for you was, you had in there as one of the options was taking money from contingency from the North Station. Not that I want to do that, but um, that's money that we're, you know, we're still months and months away from completing that project. Would mm -hmm. that project fall under that emergency declaration? Uh, it possibly could. You would need to get Bond Council's approval for that. Uh, what you're in effect saying is that money that you borrowed for a project on one site, part of that money can be used for a project on another site. You would need to have that <coughs> dynamic approved by, uh, by Bond Council. Uh, we can make that <coughs> I was just wondering if it could be put back in if you know what I mean. So if we had that extra time to go to town meeting afterwards, if we wanted to fast track this and get it going, if that would be an option then. Yeah, this is borrowing outside of the levy, so um, we, I would have to talk to the financial people to make sure that that would work. This is, the, that's probably your weakest option. Okay. Um, and not because you don't have a sufficient contingency, but because of those values <coughs> of uh, the borrowing. The way you get the money. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and the town meeting voted on that too, so I thought we just went through that with the senior center and the library switching phones. Yeah, we couldn't. We yeah. couldn't do it. <coughs> and how about money out of stabilization? Is that a possibility? Or That's a possibility. But that would require a town meeting vote as well. Two -thirds two -thirds. Majority vote. Yeah, okay. So But there's still other options here that you would have to do stabilization. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm looking at that property sticking out <laughs> No, I'm not stuck on it, but you know I, what I mean? I yeah. We, we I know we should it's a we one should. time <coughs> We yeah. do it all the time for snow and ice in the wintertime yeah. to DBW. So if they expended their budget through police and fire, we should be able to cover it July 1st. If we you declare an emergency. It is, it is possible to, uh, to ex overexpend your snow and ice budget, but you still are obliged to bring it back in yeah. the balance. Mm -hmm. yeah. yep. So you, you need money to do that. Mm -hmm. So I think we've got a plan, right? Yeah. So I will explore with the treasurer about the front six French Street whether we can get that fast track. Um, that's going to require a town meeting vote, anyways. Um, and uh, we'll set this up for town meeting. Yeah. Uh, and we can talk to bond, bond council, find out how viable that particular option is. Um, and. I'm going to be talking to Representative Kerry about getting something for Hadley in the state budget, so I'll, I'll take a signature <coughs> as to uh, uh, what our chances may be and what the state may be looking for in terms of, of uh, donations to the town of Hadley. When, when is, is Dan coming back to town anytime soon? Dan Kerry? Yeah. He's got hours in yeah. the mm -hmm. senior center. Last Friday of every month. One point. Last All right. Well, thank you. <coughs> and let's see what we can do. It sounds like town meeting vote is going to be the next option, most likely. Yes. So. But if you get that monitor system, we should make it. But the monitor system, yeah. yeah. Go from there. Okay. CDBG? Uh, acts of special legislation. We just are asked to petition the legislature to protect land on the Holyoke Range, <coughs> as well as asked to petition the legislature to transfer Article 97 protection from the North Happy Hall ball fields to Zaturka Park. I miss that one. Um, I need a formal vote so that I can transmit these two acts. Is there votes. anything we have to read to be formal? No. no just, so moved. Okay. Thank you. Second. Any further discussion mm -hmm. on those two items? Uh, all those in favor? Bye. Aye. Okay. Understand. Our community development block grant preparation. The Holyoke Range. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. 
What's the conflict? I'm just curious. It's not a conflict. Oh, oh yeah, he doesn't want to vote on that one, yeah. I see. Right. <laughs> I voted no right on this rule. Yeah. I'm not taking the blame for it. <laughs> I'm just curious, isn't it? That's right. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Yeah, I don't know. We sometimes question it too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for the community development block grant <laughs> prep. We are asked to designate the town administrator as the environmental certifying officer for the application. Right. So, um, so this is, yeah, basically so a housekeeping place. For housekeeping her. item, and if we get the grant, we can always change. We can always do something okay. different, but this would help with our grant application for now. Okay. Second, I think I heard Joyce say so much. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Valley bike share program. We are going to put that on hold this week. We visit that in a couple of weeks. DLTA grant applications, uh, or DLTA grant solicitations. Uh, PVPC uh, has asked us for <coughs> direct local technical aid grants. Uh, I had a few that I need to still email David. We met today. I don't know if anyone else has anything different. I can always list the ones I had, but David, you had a couple. One was solar. Yeah, so I think we should re-enroll in the, the best management practices for large scale, large scale solar development. Uh, and the reason for that is that the Massachusetts smart uh, program requirements keep on changing. And uh, in order to stay on top of that, uh, a dynamic situation. Uh, we should uh, uh, enroll in the regional best management practices for the small, large-scale solar development. I also think that we should um, um, go uh, explore a best management practices for information technology use and social media use. This is something that's a widespread uh, issue and. Uh, <coughs> changing all the time and it would be good to have something that a number of towns could uh, adopt for their uh, employees and their uh, IT purposes. So that second one surprised me. I, I would think that there would be best practices out there now, especially social media. Yeah, but I don't think it's all put together in, in a form that's easily digestible by small towns in particular. It seemed like to me too from the last uh, MMA conference that's an issue that's there's a lot of gray areas when it comes to social yeah. media yeah, right. and adopting the policies was something they were encouraging people to do but they didn't really have any examples. There's no, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I that. Yeah, and PVPC has a uh, regional IT program, so I think this would be a natural for them. Mm -hmm. It's a use that's needed by multiple towns, it's best management practices, and they're in the business. Um, and we get, we can submit as any, many applications as we wish, there's no upper limit to that. Okay. All right, so those, those are two that you're submitting, but they wouldn't preclude us from doing? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, and then I had, uh, looking at regional flood control, as we had talked about yeah. that last meeting, mm -hmm. uh, these aren't necessarily us, but you know, looking at zoning bylaws and accessory dwelling units, possibly um, master plan update and correlate correlating that with the CPA plan, because some of the thing that came out of the housing was those two plans were slightly <coughs> going in different directions. Um, Does the flood control plan don't Mike flood control plan? Emergency management got quite a bit to do with that, don't they? A flood control plan? Yeah. As far as? Like just to like, you know, it came up in the last meeting just about the dike. Yeah. The Army Corps of Engineers looking at a broader regional approach possibly mm -hmm. to trying to just upgrade that those large infrastructure projects. Well, our MVP program that yeah. we just had and then also the, they're redoing the flood maps now yeah. as well. So I think that's probably what we're looking at. Yeah, it's a lot. So, yeah. yeah. 
it's a long way. It's a long <coughs> way, but I mean, the MVP, I would say, is probably the closest one. Yeah. Is that regional? The MVP? Yeah. Uh, it's local, I believe. Just it's for local yeah. funding. Yeah. Uh, we have a local hazard mitigation grant as well, but it's a little bit more difficult to, um, it's a little bit more restrictive. I think the MVP is probably going to be a better option for us. Yeah. And then uh, I have regional water wastewater, looking at that, um, and possibly bylaws having to do with student housing regulation. That was, yeah. Um, something along those lines. So. You guys just have a meeting on that. Yeah. Yeah, that was something that came up, but and it was something Tim mentioned as well. So. Right. Yeah, I mean, I was thinking about the, the housing because there's a lot of conversation about that right now. So yeah. between the various 40, chapter 40, whatever programs and applicability to small towns, you know, some of the, these programs are out there. It makes sense for like the city of Northampton, but not necessarily us. <coughs> yeah. um, helping us hone in on ones that we could actually do something with. And you know, student housing, and the I mean, yeah. So I don't know if we get any, we would probably want buy-in from the planning board, right, if we're going to ask them to do anything related to yeah, so I'm, I'm yeah. going to be talking to the planning board. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. So. And I have to email you the list. So yes, please. anyway. Yep. OK. Anything else there? No. I think we are on Senior Center Library and Fire Substation updates. Does anybody want to start? Fire, do you guys have anything? Uh, we met today. They're uh, they're on schedule. They're working. Trades are working inside now. Uh, the roof. They're prefabbing the metal roofing off site right now and doing the trim work. Um, so they are hoping to actually be a little ahead of schedule uh, sometime in the next couple weeks. <coughs> on how those trades do. So it is going through quite well. Uh, library. We met. Uh, the library building committee met on Monday night. And that meeting went well. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that came up was a joint sign uh, for the that would sit in front for both the senior center and the library. So um, there's a, a design that's going to you all yeah. for your evaluation, and then you've been invited to the next building committee meeting and hopefully make a decision that's on February 10th. Yep. Um, other than that, again, I think it's. Uh, Pretty darn obvious what the what's going on. So I mean, everybody can see now the um, the building really kind of filling, framing in, if, if I can put it that way. So uh, I think the the OPM is earning earning his stripes right now. But it's all good. Senior Center, you want to? We're moving here? along further, and yeah. we're working on our dedication oh, yeah. plaque. Uh, would you please? We know David Phil's name is incorrect for correcting that. But would you make sure everything on here is correct for you personally or oh, anything else? Okay, the next one. Thank you. Yep. Would you like to see one, David? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You want the art too? Because we've done our class. Oh, you guys already have yours? Well, would that be? I like the last And the question is does the town have a clean seal anywhere we can? I have multiple copies that I can give you of the seal in multiple different forms. Okay. JPEGs, mm -hmm. PDFs. Great. We're going to do a little different spacing on the lines, but we're looking for spelling corrections. Mm -hmm. Or anything that is an obvious omission, because we don't do this very often, and want to make sure that those who should be included are included. John's name, right? Okay, I'll take him back <laughs> with corrections on the. Yo, he wants his middle initial in there. Oh, I, I could just correct everybody's and email you. Do you think, do you, think you should have the new senior director's name on there? Yes. Yeah, she's on there. Yeah. She's on there. She's Kaylee, on there. She's she's on there. there. Okay. Yeah. And they have their yeah. years yeah. listed. It's not a very clean copy yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because we try to conserve ink at the senior center. <laughs> so we print in draft form, but. Uh, okay. okay. Good. So we actually did two signs, but one was a, one was a, we did to a, a smaller sign. 
Um, Did, are you guys doing a brass thing like that? Yeah. You're going to correct David Hills there? Oh, yeah. With the second yeah. and the second? Yes. He likes both. We already yeah. know that. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. We heard that. I, 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 I told them on the yeah. whatever day that was Tuesday about that. So. Yeah. I use my name too. No, because this is the line of them. We could. All right. I don't know when they need it by, though. We'll find out. Figure it out. Yeah. All right, and then we have two. <coughs> we'll be in the building before the election. And could be. be up. Oh, well, that's very ambitious. So. <laughs> have you been over there? <laughs> our our um, <coughs> final date for punch list and everything is May 1st and we've got to have to have at least two weeks to make sure things are working. Right. That sounds like April 15th to me. Yeah, the yeah, election is the 17th. We won't have a new select person. 14th. 14th. Even then. Still. <laughs> um, yeah, just two change orders for the Senior Center. We already voted on these at the um, the finance committee meeting. Thank you, Jane. Uh, one's a catch, uh, catch basin. That's uh, change order number 34. And one is two additional bollards at the sidewalk entry just to get them matched at um, the sidewalk between the Legion and the senior center. Yeah, and that's 033R1. The first change order is for $6,893.25. The second one was $2,277.95. They're under 10,000 total, so we did vote on them already. I don't know if we need to re-vote at this one, but just to I don't think so. make it aware. Okay, okay, great. That's all I had. Perfect. Um, and the, the inside is looking really good. Good. Yeah, we had a tour after our monthly senior center building committee After that, and we last invited week. the senior center board of directors and the friends board since they're all very involved mm -hmm. and everybody's really excited about it so. yeah actually it looks like a building and, it does uh, there's and rooms it and there's yeah all kinds of stuff it's crazy nice yeah. and if any of you would like to see it we can make arrangements let me know and then uh, town administrator report David. Uh, mostly financial right now. We've touched on the uh, the, the major uh, points with other projects, um, uh, with the exception of the ditch cleaning because of the mild weather. Um, DPW crews have re-engaged for that project and uh, proceeding with the ditch cleaning. Do you think you were going to be cleaning ditches in January? <laughs> Actually, there's some portions that are better off to be frozen. In the process. Some of the folks lawns, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like you, you can still dig them. You know, as long as there's four feet of frost. Yeah. <laughs> you know, reasonable amount. The water's always flowing through them, so. Mm -hmm. Right. So your 2020 revenues to date through uh, this, uh, December are looking good. Um, and your uh, expenses are keeping <coughs> within uh, tolerable limits. Um, safety committee meeting is going to be held fairly soon with the fire chief to talk about the MVP planning. Uh, our audit, uh, we uh, are on the cusp of getting our free cash certified, so now is the time to start planning the FY19 audit site visit. And so we reached out to Lions and the Heath to schedule that, and as soon as I have that information, I'll provide uh, that to you. Uh, we have uh, uh, tax, uh, the free cash we're going to be working on with the uh, Department of Revenue and a consultant uh, on Tuesday next to get that uh, done. So we hope to have that completed or this week next week. Um, we have budgets and articles due on February 5th. We have a public hearing on the Community Development Block Grant on that same <coughs> day. Um, February 19th, I'll be presenting my proposed FY21 budget. Uh, we have primary, presidential primary on March 3rd, that's Super Tuesday. April 14th, annual town elections. May 7th is our annual town meeting. Great. 
we um, had the immediate taped the um, program that we ran Monday, and we're hoping to put it on the town website soon for yeah. everyone to see. But the basic message is if you're a homeowner and your income, not assets, but income, is under $49,000 a year and you're single, you may qualify for certain home improvements. We're not calling, not talking about um, remodeling the kitchen with granite counters and things, but if you need a handicap ramp, or perhaps you need a roof, or perhaps you need <coughs> safety repairs. something, safety repairs. Specialized showers. You should, you should look at this and fill out the paperwork that was in your newsletter, or come pick up another copy of it at the office, senior center office. Was that well attended, Jane? Were there many uh, people there? No, but it was attended. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, sometimes with the income limits, that can be tricky, you know, where people don't necessarily want to go. But so I think having it aired and that right. getting the information out right. is a really That's good idea. Hope because it's a short time period that they have right. to show interest. And if we don't get enough interest shown, then they can apply for the grant. So please look at this, consider it, and if you have any questions, you can call um, Haley. And the grant amount is going to be north of uh, half a million dollars, so this is something that we want to be aggressive about. <coughs> Whatever we can do to boost our scores, that will be to our overall benefit. And uh, as far as, like, um, the Hadley Housing Authority, can they do any kind of larger application? Or can it's we individual. do individual? It's individual only, so it's not. Okay. Yeah, but if you're a renter, you can use it. Okay. Yeah. No, just need your landlord's permission. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I don't know that. That's somebody asked me that, so I can tell them that they can. Okay. But I, I think um, Golden Court is staying in. They do all the renovations in. I, is it? Yeah. Yeah. It is. Okay. Yeah. We have given them money. Yeah, because so I thought they were applying for some CPA money to do oh, okay. upgrades over there. So. A portion of it done from the town. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <coughs> okay, uh, anything else, sir? Good. So, uh, announcements. I just, we have a town election coming up. Uh, it's coming up on Tuesday, April 14th. We have a bunch of deadlines if you're looking to run. Thursday, February 21st is the last day to obtain nomination papers. Tuesday, February 25th is the last day to submit your nomination papers. Tuesday, March 10th is the last day to file nomination papers with the town clerk. And Thursday, March 12th is the last day to withdraw your nomination papers. <coughs> and then Wednesday, March 25th is the last day to register to vote for town election. And the seats that are up or the offices to be filled are moderator and Randy Isers, the current moderator, select board, Molly Keegan, is up for a three-year term. Assessor, three-year term, Raymond Shala. The Board of Health, we have a three-year term, Richard Tessier. Planning Board, we've got a five-year term, Joe Zagrodnik. School Committee, we have two three-year terms, Tara Bruger and Keith Shannon. Elector under Oliver Smith-Will, we've got a one-year term, Sheila Kenditsny. Library trustee, three-year term, we have two, Maureen Devine and Alan Weinberg. And Park Commission, we've got a three-year term, uh, Andrew Kopaki. And then Housing Authority, we've got a five-year term uh, for one, Jack Yusko. And so, yeah, if you're looking to run, nomination papers is February 21st, 25th for the last day to submit nomination papers to the Registrar for Certification. And March 10th is the last day to file with the town clerk. I don't know if we have any other announcements. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I think you should read this. <coughs> I can do the full story. <coughs> okay, so this is a letter that we received. Um, and this is coming from Ron and Chris Wiskevitz. On behalf of the family of Helen Wiskevitz, uh, I want to express our sincere appreciation to honor Helen with the tree planting. This honor is dual in that her tree was the start of an annual Arbor Day celebration, and she would have been very pleased. 
I want to compliment the trade committee members. Their enthusiasm was palpable and their hard work did not go unnoticed. The amount of thoughtful planning and effort by those volunteer members to include the <coughs> children and their teachers along with the scouts certainly helped the children to learn at an early age the importance of trees on our environment. Although that cold October day felt more like winter than autumn, that was the truth, <laughs> it was quite apparent the effort the committee put into the event. They organized activities for the children, including Smokey the Bear. Committee members provided refreshments donated to Hadley businesses. They reached out to Weinzick Nursery to donate the trees, and they coordinated the town DPW to plant the trees. This was certainly a lot of work. Uh, we're sure that the select board is as proud of this committee as the Wiskevitz family is. We're looking forward to future Arbor Day events and plan to fully support their work. And looks like there may have been a donation as well. <coughs> nice. Yeah, very nice. Thank you. Thank you for your donation. Any other announcements? No, yeah. we have. Can I announce the condolences yeah. to your wife? On yeah. <coughs> passing off her uncle. uncle. Mm -hmm. Name. His uh, name was a Levy Carrier. Carrier. Yeah. Sorry for your wife and her family. Thank you. Thank you. And I guess I have. <coughs> you as well. <coughs> yeah. I do. I have the honor of uh, mentioning that my mother-in-law just passed this past weekend. Um, she and my father-in-law ran Zev's Auto Service for 50 years. Um, besides working at Pro Brush all her life, she still put her time in at the garage and pumped gas and did whatever she needed to do down there. Um, she always had a smile. She never was intrusive. Um, she was a good mother-in-law. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. We have a motion to adjourn. So Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Good night, everybody. Good night.